May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The Saints in Our Lives, part two or three or four. I don't know how many times I've talked about the saints in our lives, but I have some new ones for you today. You have heard me talk about some of the saints in my life before. Some have been living saints, and some have been saints that have gone on to their reward in God's heaven. Now, of course, these saints have been my mother and my father, my grandparents, and particular clergy that have definitely helped to shape my life. Let me tell you about a few more saints, both living and dead, that have also helped me form my moral and spiritual perspective as I continue on my own spiritual pilgrimage. These are the educators of my life. And I know that you also should be able to resonate with the educators of your own life. I remember when I was in senior public school in a school in Scarborough called J.S. Woodsworth. It was only grade 7 and 8. And I was taking shop classes. Remember those? Well, the teacher, Mr. Bradbury, and I've forgotten the other teacher's name, unfortunately, who taught metal and wood shop. They gave the class a project. We were to build anything that we wanted. We had to design it. We had to draft it. And then we had to build it. I chose to make a garbage can. <laughs> no, not that one. A little one for the bedroom, right? You see, I was deathly afraid of welding. So I decided to use sheet metal and rivets. When I began drafting my design out, I did it in the actual size that I wanted the garbage can to be, not really according to Hoyle. But my teachers were watching me with interest, and they let me continue by using my own creative mind. And so it was that I had drafted my full-scale design on paper, and I was able simply to trace the shape directly onto a large piece of sheet metal. I got the tin snips and went to work cutting it out of the sheet metal. When that was done, all I had to do was bend the metal shapes into place and then rivet the tabs together. Of course, there was a six-inch square hole in the bottom. But I was prepared for that and had included four tabs that I could rivet a flat six-inch square piece to the bottom. When it was done, I thought that it was a masterpiece. Apparently, so did my teachers because I won the shop award primarily for the process that I had used to achieve my goal when I graduated from grade eight. The two shop teachers I consider to be saints because they allowed me to be free to explore my own way of creativity. Their presence was all about encouragement and affirmation. Well, these are important experiences in our lives because we need people who are not our parents to see in us our worth and the possibility to achieve greatness. <laughs> a garbage can greatness? Well, I don't know about that. And when we come to a roadblock and we do not know what to do, like my shop teachers, expertise and guidance is given by the saints in our lives so that we can succeed in whatever task we have set out to accomplish. One more educator that I want to mention today is a teacher's assistant, Gail Yi, who led the TA class for the course I was enrolled in 
on the theology of Karl Rahner. Believe me when I say that all theology needs to be unpacked by someone like Gail was to me and to my classmates. Having a theological mentor like Gail is what brings dry theology to life. I had taken this class as an undergrad, but believe me when I say that the impact of this class on my spiritual formation was key to bringing me back to the church and eventually to ordination. To quote Rahner, it was my aha moment of faith that led me to embrace a universality of both salvation and grace that only God could give. I learned then all about the inclusive nature of God in Jesus' incarnation and the grace and love that only the incarnate word of God could communicate. Let me tell you of two phrases that helped me to understand these great mysteries of God. The first is, when God wanted to be not God, then the incarnation happens and Jesus is born. This helps me to understand the Trinity of God being manifest as the Father or Mother or Creator, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three persons, yet one God. God remains fully God in any of these expressions, and Jesus the Son remains fully human and God at the same time, without diminishing his humanity or divinity at all. By God's own desire, the limitations of God's own power are manifest in Jesus in the Incarnation. Therefore, the Incarnation is simply God wanting to be not God. Simple, isn't it? The other expression is the notion that Rahner describes as the anonymous Christian and that the idea of universal salvation is not dependent on the profession of faith by any individual as much as it is on the accomplishment of salvation by Jesus' self-sacrifice on the cross, an action which completely belongs to God alone. Therefore, an anonymous Christian can be almost anyone, even an atheist, by virtue of God's own redeeming work, independent of human involvement, which we simply call God's grace. Grace is always given and never earned. We do not earn our way into heaven, but we do choose to live in the kingdom now as believers and as ones that do profess our faith in Jesus. The believer is living in the kingdom now and enjoys the benefits of that privilege right here on earth, even before our final entry into God's heaven upon our death. So if someone ever asks you this question, when were you saved? Well, the answer is not Sunday, October 30th, 2022 at 10 a.m. when I invited Jesus into my heart. It is when, by God's grace, Jesus died on the cross and by God's grace, when Jesus returns in the resurrection. Of course, we do begin an intentional living in the kingdom when we do invite Jesus into our hearts, don't we? Not everyone chooses to do this, but does it mean that they are then excluded from God's kingdom? Definitely not. It does take time, but God eventually learns that humanity is too stubborn and restless, and that if any faithfulness is going to be established, then it will have to begin with God himself 
or God herself? Of course, the question is always asked that if God has already done the saving, then why do I have to live a virtuous or a lawful life? <laughs> well, then it becomes a question of moral, morality, and of course, living in community, right? Knowing that we know of God's grace and generosity then, it really should be impossible for us to say no to God, since we are all created in God's image. However, because of free will, we must necessarily always be able to say no if we want to. Otherwise, we are just puppets doing the will of another. Well, these educators in my life definitely made a difference in my faith. Yes, my friends, there are so many saints in our lives that help us to reach our full potential. Never mind the great saints that guide us indirectly by virtue of the example of their lives, like St. Francis, of course. So I invite you to think again about those people who are in your life and have been in your life, and give God thanks that God has sent them into our lives. Amen? Amen.